What's up Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Achilles tendinopathy. First, I'm going to define what it is and some of the common causes. Second, I'm going to highlight a research-backed treatment plan laid out by these guys and we'll highlight some of the other current research surrounding this topic. And finally, I'll show you some of those exercises that'll help prevent this nagging injury from occurring in the future. All right, let's get it. Smack the lip. Achilles tendinopathy is an overuse injury characterized by pain and swelling at the Achilles tendon, and it's often associated with impaired athletic performance. Generally, it can be found in two areas, what's known as mid-portion or intersectional tendinopathy. Based on what I've read, the treatment options are very similar. However, if you're experiencing chronic intersectional tendinopathy, please consider going to see a specialist to see if surgery is necessary. That being said, if you're experiencing any type of chronic Achilles tendinopathy and you have the resources at your disposal, please go to your physician or an orthopedic specialist and let them decide if you need surgery, physical therapy, or if general exercise can help fix the problem. But if you don't have access to that, I'll do my best to help. All right, continuing on. Achilles tendinopathy is commonly found when individuals repetitively overload their tendon by rapidly increasing the intensity and or the duration of the exercise. And in our case, the skating. A common example is when an older skater, like me, skates hard for a couple days and overuses their pushing leg. That Achilles tendon will take all the stress and then combine that with suboptimal joint mechanics, the tendon will begin to degrade. Then the skater will experience pain and swelling and a decrease in strength and function. Not to mention the other problems this is gonna cause down the line. Don't be this guy. Treating Achilles tendinopathy can be very tricky and can take an extremely long time. So first tip, please be patient. Remember, what most likely caused your Achilles tendinopathy was overusing it while the tendon lacked that functional strength to keep up. So if we overdo it too quickly, we'll be immediately back at square one. Patience in your recovery process is gonna be key. Step one in the recovery process is gonna be building up that functional strength. It's very important that during all of your recovery steps, you're using the right amount of stimulus. And by that, I mean the correct number of sets, reps, and the right load. This is where it's gonna get a little tricky for me. Because all of you are a little bit different, I'm gonna need you to be aware of what your body feels like after each Achilles workout. For this, let's use a reference scale from the aforementioned study, the pain monitoring model. As the model states, you're not allowed to go over the pain threshold of five. So if you wake up in the morning and your pain's at like a level seven, you've definitely overdone it. And then please refer back to the amount of sets, reps, and the load you use in the previous workout. For example, if you use three sets and 15 reps, just take that down a little bit, maybe three sets of 10, maybe three sets of 12, and see how that feels. It's just extremely important that you're in that acceptable pain range. I'm gonna repeat this again because this is absolutely key. Adaptations in strength will only be caused by progressively overloading your tendon. However, if you overdo it, you're gonna to create too much muscle damage and that's what's gonna cause that negative response creating the pain and swelling. So please be very patient and cautious when progressing your sets, reps, and load, and please just always refer back to that pain scale. You cannot be above a five. The duration of step one may last roughly six to 12 weeks, just depending on how your pain levels are decreasing. Use your best judgment, and once again, stick to that pain model. If you have any questions about when you should advance to the next stage, feel free to reach out. You can either comment below or DM me on my Instagram. Step two in our recovery process, we'll be continuing to make improvements in Achilles strength while slowly introducing light plyometric activities such as jogging, hops, skips, and other low impact plyo exercises. Tip one for this phase will be to perform those plyo exercises before you do the strength portion during the workouts. And tip two is to begin them extremely slow. I know these exercises may look pretty easy, but it's a new stimulus, so progress with patience. In the case of tendon rehab, it's always better to be on the side of not overdoing it. Step two may last roughly four to 12 weeks. Once again, it's all depending on how your pain levels are decreasing. You always just gotta be lower than a five. And finally, step three will be about continuing to build strength, progressing those plyo exercises, and now improving upon imbalances throughout the rest of your body. Continue on with those calf and Achilles exercises, but now it's important to increase that stimulus during those plyometric activities. But really the main focus of this step is gonna be addressing those joint imbalances that may have led you down this path. Ask yourself, do you lack ankle dorsiflexion? Do you lack hip mobility? How much time do you really spend on taking care of your body after you skate and overall recovery? All these questions should just show how connected the body is. 
trust me, the more care you provide your body, the better it's gonna treat you when you're on the board. So if you don't already do these things, let's start right now so we can prevent some nagging injuries down the line. I want you to take at least two to three days between each Achilles workout. And in the early stages of rehab, this includes skate sessions. You need to allow for adequate time before restressing the tendon. And if you're older than 35, research shows three days is a must. As we discussed, step one is about developing calf strength. And to begin this process, we're gonna focus on isometric holds and double leg exercises. Isometrics will be a great way to load the tendon without creating too much muscle damage. And the double leg exercises will ensure we're progressing at a controlled rate. During this step, I want you to choose two to four exercises. We're gonna perform about two to four sets with roughly eight to 15 reps of each exercise. And if you're gonna do it isometric, it could be between 30 seconds and roughly three minutes on the max side. Use a light to moderate load during any of these exercises. Just once again, it's always about pain during the exercise and then how you feel the next day. Some of the exercises that I want you to do during step one are isometric calf raise holds. Come up onto your toes and actively grip the ground. Focus all your attention on that contraction and make sure you're given 100% effort. Isometric split squat holds. Come into your normal split squat stance. However, this time raise your front heel off the ground. Just like the previous exercise, really focus on gripping the ground. Place roughly 90% of your weight on that front foot, drive your knee wide, and enjoy the burn. Controlled double leg calf raises. Just like the previous two exercises, come high up onto your toes and fully contract your calves. Control the descent of your heels back to the ground, then repeat. Each rep should roughly take two seconds. Seated calf raises. Sit on the bench and place a weight on your knee. You may need to use a barbell for this exercise as you most likely will be able to control a moderately heavy load. Just like before, come up onto your toes, contract your calves with 100% effort, pause at the top, then slowly lower back down with control. And bent knee calf raises. Start on one leg, use something for balance, bend your knee, keep your knee past your toes, then contract up into that calf raise. Hold the top for a second or two, then return to the ground with control. In step two, the focus will be on progressively increasing the volume and the intensity of the exercises, and now slowly introducing those light plyometric exercises. In step two, we're gonna use an eccentric tempo during your calf exercises. We have previously discussed this on this channel, but just as a quick reminder, in terms of this exercise, the eccentric portion is when that muscle is increasing in length. So in this case, it's when your heels are lowering back to the ground. Take roughly four to five seconds for your heels to contact the ground, Contract back up to the top and pause for a solid one to two seconds, then repeat. This tempo is going to increase the amount of time your Achilles is under tension during the exercise, creating more muscle damage, causing a greater adaptation. Just remember that pain cannot exceed a five during or after the exercise. Many of the exercises in step two can be the exact same as step one. Just make sure to increase the intensity of the exercise by increasing the amount of sets and or reps, the amount of weight you're using, or by slowing down that eccentric tempo. Use light to moderate loads, and once again, just don't let that pain get higher than a five. Step two, we'll now begin to introduce some plyometric activities, such as pogo hops, some skips, and some submaximal bounds. Pogo hops are one of my absolute personal favorites for restoring that Achilles spring-like function. Lightly bounce on the balls of your feet, driving your toes up towards your shin each time your feet leave the ground. Keep strong, stiff ankles as you bounce up and down for roughly 20 to 60 seconds. Progress your pogos by moving forward, side to side, single leg, or even multi-directional. Other exercises you can use for stage two plyos include submaximal bounds, A skips, drive your knee up to 90 degrees and bring your chest just slightly forward. Keep your ankle tight, roughly 90 degrees, and bring your foot just slightly forward as you drive your knee up. Try to absorb the force with the ball of your foot and keep the rhythm just like so. Or three hot pogos. Just like normal pogos, keep your ankles tight and bounce off the balls of your feet. Start with one small hop, progress to a medium, finally an explosive, then repeat. Okay, and finally step three, which is gonna be a little different. You may have noticed from earlier, step three doesn't have a time frame. This is because Achilles tendinopathy is hard as to get rid of. And it's like one of those things where you feel like you're in the clear and then all of a sudden she's back. The most in-depth return to sport criteria states that an athlete is only deemed fully recovered when they've completed one full season without any symptoms. So I guess in our case, let's say no less than six months 
with absolutely no pain or swelling. And that's why there's no time frame for step three. You're most likely gonna experience a minor setback and that's okay. Just get back on the rehab and you'll be back on your board soon. Step three, once again, we'll continue to build that Achilles and calf strength. It'll include a little bit more intense plyometric activities, but now I really want you to incorporate the rest of your body. Correct muscle asymmetries and imbalances as much as you possibly can. Do the proper mobility work, stretch, and just treat your body well. Stay hydrated, eat well, and take your health into your own hands. That's what's really gonna make that long-term change. It's not gonna be easy, but it'll be extremely rewarding. The step three calf and Achilles strength exercises will basically be the same. Continue to use that eccentric tempo, even slow it down if you want, and continue to progress that load. Just once again, always refer back to that pain scale. If you want, at this stage, and if you're feeling pretty good, you can incorporate more compound lifts such as high pulls, power cleans, etc. These will definitely provide an adequate stimulus for your calves while training the rest of your body. Just remember, if you're a beginner, start light. The plyometrics for this stage will actually be quite similar too, but now you can progress to more maximal effort, hops, bounds, and skips. And lastly, for stage three, as we said, the most important thing is everything else. If you're at this stage, you've been doing all the right things for your Achilles tendon health, but now it's time to incorporate the rest of your body. To stay on topic and to keep this video relatively short, please go check out some of my other videos as many of these topics have been covered in the past. And last thing, really quick, I just wanna to touch upon supplements. Research has shown that a collagen supplement combined with vitamin C, roughly about 30 minutes prior to exercise, can be beneficial to tendon repair. There'll be a couple studies in the description below regarding this information. That being said, all of the literature I used to create this video will have a link down below. Damn, that was a long video. Thank you guys for sticking it out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please show your support by hitting that like button down below and subscribe if you're not already. All right, fam, I'm out. I'll see you guys later on Skate Athletics.